my first movie poster, which is still on Amazon Prime right now to this day, is was for a movie that won some awards at the Tribeca Film Festival called Ghost Box Cowboy. Oh, okay. And um, I created some other stuff that wasn't three. It wasn't three D based. It, it, you know, it was more composition and. It was about Ric Flair when Ric Flair was oh. in, you know, from the WWE when he was in the, the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting press off of that, you know, for the New York Post and the Daily News and, nice. um, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I had a good publicist at that time. So, <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet an artist who was inspired by comics, but then later on, taught themselves how to use Photoshop, as all comic artists did. But beyond that, most people would stop there. They would draw, use Photoshop, and put their art out there. Well, this person decided to marry 3D modeling into their comic book style. And on top of it, they wanted to learn how to brand, to learn how to do imagery for marketing, to do vector graphics, things like that for businesses. It's a great story. And here's the interview starting right now. My government name is Angel Manuel Lopez, and uh, my artist name would be Son of a Saint. And uh, I've been a digital artist for more than uh, 15 years, dealing with everything from concept art to movie poster art to comic books, and it just goes on and on from there. Um, with my experience, I've also uh, learned some graphic design that I use here and there, a part of my art as well, to give it a whole new style and kind of new feel, uh, you know, because I don't, I wanted to stand out from obviously the millions of other artists that are out there. Um, and I felt like this gave me a little bit of an edge. So, yeah. And where <laughs> are you located right now? So I am. Originally, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, but okay. uh, when me, me and my wife got married, we moved to Hoboken, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Is Wait, okay, so I heard New Jersey, and I instantly just went like, is that where the Sopranos is supposed to take place? No. <laughs> no, New Jersey is a large place. I don't know why instantly I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, does, it doesn't help that I got the accent that I have and I'm saying I'm living in Jersey now. So. Right, right. <laughs> why, so why did you end up in Hoboken? Although I do love the background that you have. I love the fact that you're like sitting, yeah, with buildings and everything behind you. That's super cool. Yeah. So um, it was just a lot more affordable than trying to get a place in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, Brooklyn isn't what it used to be as far as like when I was growing up, you know, like uh, a studio apartment is probably like $4,000 now. Like, so it's yeah. not something that is feasible, especially, you know, my wife and I now have twin daughters, you know, you know every penny counts. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. And you said that you started out doing this 15 years ago, like started out with art in general 15 years ago, or are you saying you started doing digital? No, art, okay. no just digital. So as a, an artist like traditionally i you know i was five years old when i started drawing stuff that was making sense i guess you could say yeah um my father growing up my father was a truck driver and um i wouldn't see him much so the what he would do to kind of uh bridge the gap between him and i was he would pick up comic books every time he'd stop at a truck stop he'd pick up a snack and by the time he got home he'd have like this huge crazy stack what kind what kind were you getting because you you there are archie comics and richie riches in there if you're doing it from a truck stop okay no no i was getting i was getting batman spider-man okay you know fantastic four ghost rider stuff like that all right um whatever my you know my dad obviously wouldn't have known what's what he just picked it up and you know that's for kids whatever you know and i started developing an interest in trying to draw the characters so you know five, six years old, I'm redrawing, you know, as best I could at that time, obviously. Um, these ca- these characters, he'd come home, I'd show them, and now he made it into this game, you know? He's like, okay, well, he'd randomly pick from the comic books he brought me. I draw this one, draw this one, draw this one, and, you know, oh, really? we'll see what it's like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he kind of inadvertently fueled the passion of art for me, you know, like, 
nice. he didn't even realize what you know he actually set the the you know the foundation for what is my career now <laughs> right do you remember which artists were drawing the comics at the time that's one thing that, i had a very similar thing but i don't remember <laughs> Like I started out with oh, Iron Man. I liked Iron Man, which is funny because I'm a DC guy, but growing up like Iron Man was the thing. And I realized that it was, uh, I want to say it was Kirby. That was the one that I was really influenced by, but you don't remember I mean, which I, comic book artist. I mean, I could say with certainty that the Spider-Man stuff that okay. I had was absolutely did go. Um, but as far as, because I was getting a lot of Batman stuff, I couldn't even tell you. It might have been anyone from like Tommy Castillo to mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, considering the time period. It literally could have been anybody. Like, uh, I don't remember. Right. I don't even have those comics anymore. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, you think that. I resell them. Uh, it, it varies. <laughs> <laughs> so now when you started doing this, you were drawing these. You said your dad was showing you or I liked that. He was going like, now draw this, draw this one, draw that. That's cool. Now, how did this evolve? How uh, how did you how did you start learning the different ways? When did you? Oh, actually, here's what I want to ask. When did you first start going? Oh, I can ink this and color it on the computer. <laughs> you know that sort of so, stuff. Oh, so that the actual introduction to uh, digital. That's actually yeah. a funny story. Uh, so back when I was young and dumb, as opposed to old and dumb. Um, <laughs> I, um, I used to be in a metal band. I was a singer in a metal band. As we all are and, uh, at some point yeah. in time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was doing shows in New York, local shows and stuff like that. And, you know, we'd go to Jersey, do some shows and I would sketch a lot. And, um, I always, I never stopped sketching. Right. So I would have bands that we would play with, see what I sketch or whatever. And they go, man, I like that kid. Can you make something for my band? Can you maybe make a logo? Can you not? I had no idea what it took to call to create branding or anything like that. I didn't draw something, make it look cool. Like what right. is it gonna do? Yeah. So my buddy, buddy of mine, um, um, his name is Jay. He got me back then a pirated version uh -huh. of uh, <laughs> Photoshop, which it wasn't even I don't even think it was um, CS yet. It might have been like Photoshop Elements or something. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I just started tinkering with it. He was like, oh, yeah, you could you could kind of paint with this and, you know, you could layer it up. And, you know, he was kind of, you know, teaching me kind of what he knew. Excuse me. And then between the two of us, we would figure the program out and teach each other what we figured out. Right, because back then it was there was YouTube, yes, but it wasn't to like to the extent that a tutorial. How do I do this? You know. Oh, like, so you're saying this was even like around? Let's see, YouTube I think started in 2005, maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So it might have been the beginning stages of like um, YouTube. Yeah. Um, so there was no real tutorials on there. You know, people mm -hmm. were putting god knows what cat videos or whatever it was at that time right <laughs> and uh and um you know so whatever i learned i would pass it on to him whatever he learned he'd pass it on to me and then you get to a point where him and i are completely different styles so now you start from that foundation that you kind of built for each other you start kind of branching out what else can i learn and then i started like really paying attention to guys like uh boss logic um, you know, Spider Monkey, uh, Phase Runner, uh, hmm. um, even um, more known artists that were, they were traditional, but they were making the transition into digital, like Ken Taylor, who does like a lot of like rock poster art, mm -hmm. uh, Dan Mumford, these kind of guys that you, you always will find someone to kind of latch on to um, as far as inspiration. Yeah. And then what I would do is I would just kind of, on my own, try to pick these pieces apart, maybe try to replicate them. And then, um, like my artwork to a degree, cause Bo listen, boss logic is boss logic. Let's be for real. Like he's right. You know, for yeah. those who don't know, you know, boss logic is a digital artist from, um, Australia. And, um, he's essentially the king of what I do. So you can, if you look at my artwork, you can see how he's influenced me. Um, and in his beginning days when he was starting to get bigger, I had kind of figured out, not completely obviously, but like figured out more or less how my stuff 
to look like his, but then I didn't want to be him. I didn't want to look like him. I just wanted to understand how he was creating these compositions that told a story. That was like my thing. Like I, I need the pieces to tell a story. And, and mm -hmm. him and at the time, Spider Monkey were the only two guys that their pieces could tell a story on their own. Like if you had no lettering on it, you get something out of it. And that's what I wanted from my art. Right. So after dissecting their stuff, like um, I just kind of created my own kind of style. And then, you know, you start learning other stuff, right? So Photoshop, I use predominantly, yes, but I use things like Hexagon and Blender to create 3D sculpts that I would later throw into the pieces and digitally paint it and, and you know, give it the texturing to make it look more realistic and, you know, um, giving things that perspective angle to make mm -hmm. it look like you're kind of diving into the world as opposed to having this kind of flat 2D image, you know? Right. Um, and then... For the extra fun, I always would throw some kind of Easter egg into my pieces because I, once somebody kind of realized I did that once, it kind of caught on and people would always kind of look for it. Like if you know me from my art, then you know there's always like an Easter egg somewhere. Really? Unless, yeah. Unless what prompted that? Why did you start doing that? I just like the idea of having a piece inside of a piece, you know, like okay. having art inside of art. And it just, I, you know, from a branding perspective, I understand you have two to three seconds to capture someone's attention. Mm -hmm. But once you capture it, what do you do with it afterwards? Mm -hmm. You know, so like I like the idea that if people knew that I was the type of artist that had Easter eggs in it, they would really look at my piece and look for these things, you know. And, and I just felt like that would be, you know, fun for, for everybody. And, yeah. and, you know, fun for me to kind of try to hide it enough for, you know... Uh, come up with funny Easter eggs to put in the pieces or yeah. whatever, you know? Well, and you so. just mentioned the whole, from a branding perspective thing, but earlier you were saying bands were asking you to do logos for them, but you didn't really know anything about branding. <laughs> so at this point you're saying you had made the curve to kind of figuring out what branding is. Was there an aha moment or something that you could reference that kind of made you go, Oh, this is branding. And cause that's clearly something that is needed in graphic design. And yeah, so doing a lot of the stuff that you do. So my first job as a designer, because yes. I was obviously still wet behind the ears uh -huh. and still greener than baby poop. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, spoken but, like uh, a person with new children. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> um, I was working at this auto shop in Queens and uh, I, I was learning how to do um, – vector style art so that we can cut it on a plotter with, you know, cut vinyl and, you know, make decals out of it. And, um, and I ended up having to do a lot of stuff for commercial companies. Um, and really? kind of working with that every day, you kind of started to learn, well, this got somebody's attention. This didn't get someone's attention. You know, um, they make a lot of people would come in and make comparisons to other people's branding. And I would just sit there and go, huh, like it's not just so much that it has to look good. Like there, there has to be other things. Right. So hmm. okay, I, I just started kind of listening a lot more to people when they spoke, especially like the sales department and like the auto shop like i would kind of listen to how they would sell the product like how are you because they're selling it based on the brand mm -hmm. right whatever it is and based on what they were saying i kind of started taking that information going huh how could i apply that to art or logos not realizing that that was a whole that's an actual thing right right uh -huh. yeah so then uh, another graphic designer i became friends with just asked them I was like, hey, can you explain to me, you know, how branding works? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Sat down, kind of gave me like the fundamental formulas of what's kind of worked, what hasn't worked, things to think about. And, and I just started building from there. And obviously, you know, buying books and reading whatever I could on it. And, and But everything that I learned was always with the intention of how can I apply this to my artwork? Mm -hmm. This will make me money, sure. And maybe I don't want to do that, but how can I apply this to what I want to do? Yeah. Always kind of giving me that extra edge, you know, uh, on, on top of people. Because, like, at least from what I've seen, you're either a traditional artist or a digital artist. 
not some guys do the graphic design, but not really. Like, what if I just did everything? What if I just was just like this monster of a chimera that just did it all? You know, why not? Right. And may, maybe I can't apply it to everything, but at least I'll have the knowledge and I'll, you know, could never turn away work, you know? Mm-hmm. I like the so. fact that you uh, did it through example. An example by the meaning uh, people were telling you, this brand does it this way because, and you were like, oh, they're telling me what branding is because, I mean, it's sad to say, and I've worked in advertising agencies building websites for them, so I've had to work with the graphic designers, but the people that sell it to the companies are the project managers, the salesmen, and it's it's so funny the way that that works. So they learn from the graphic designers, but they also talk about it on a money angle. The graphic designers talk about it from a what they actually are doing as a branding angle, but they're not motivated by money. They're motivated by individuality, by standing out. But that also is marketing. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, and you were sure. right there in the middle of it. And you were like, oh, let me listen to this. Let me listen to that. And you, it's basically like free training. That's how I learned about it. I'm still, I have no idea, but I know the concept. And when people say the words, I'm like, I know what that word means now. <laughs> <laughs> when they make yeah. use their marketing I mean, speak. Yeah, I mean, as an as an artist, like regardless of what your medium is, what you know, what you're using. I, so I I had the privilege of of meeting Tommy Castillo, which he drew Batman back in the '90s, and I would have some great conversations with him. One of the greatest jewels, as we say, he gave me was, um, "Are you an artist? Yeah. Well." You want to do this for the rest of your life? Yeah. Okay. Here's what you do, kid. Understand that you are a student of art for the rest of your life. Okay? Really? You will ha have to learn and absorb everything you can, different styles, different techniques, whatever it is. Always be a student of art. You know why? Because the minute you think, uh, I'm going to clean up the language because he was, you know, he cursed like a sailor, but if, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the minute you think you are that awesome, you know, that you know it all, you have just put a cap on your learning ability and you will no longer grow because you already know so much. Your cups are already full, right? So what else can we put in it? Hmm. But if you have this understanding that you are a student, what's a student always want to do? Student always wants to learn. Student always wants to uh, progress. If you keep that mentality, you always grow, you'll learn new styles, maybe develop a couple of, of your own as you go, and, you know, you, you'll always work. And I, I've always taken that with me, you know, because that's, no matter how good I've become, you know, how good I've become in a style or how good I've become in a technique, there's always something I don't know, you yeah. know? Uh, so, like, uh, it's, it's always best to keep that kind of mindset, you know? Um, and that helped me because, as you said, I was in the middle listening to everybody talking about how this works with this and this works with that. And mm -hmm. I just kind of stuck my hands out and went, I'll just take all of these, you know? Like <laughs> Right. Yeah. Now, you do a bunch of different things, too. You do comic book art. You also do the branding. And you, uh, I mean, just the styles that you have. What, how would you, in a general sense, explain your work? How would you explain the stuff that you create? And I want to say well, the stuff that you personally create, I guess not even, you know, just your own personal style. Oh, it's, that's, that's real easy. I'm a, I'm a detailed psychopath. That's <laughs> what it comes down to. I'm a, <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just nuts with detail. Like I, I love putting all this detail that maybe the general public will never see, but I, I know it's there, Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and it just, I, I just love the idea of breathing life into someone's, you know, um, concept, idea, dream, whatever, giving it this sense of life that no one else is really going to be able to do, you know, um, because as freelancers, you know, a lot, I know a lot of freelancers, you get the gig and sure, you're happy about it. And I'm not going to say that no artist is ever happy about getting a commission, but you don't, not a lot of people put kind of bleed into the pieces, even if, if it's a comic book cover or if it's a small branding, 
no one's bleeding into these things and giving it that life that it should have. You know, I, I want these things to jump off the page and have a life of their own, you know, oh, yeah. okay. um, if possible. So um, that's, yeah. So I, I'm just a detailed psychopath. You know? Okay. <laughs> now you said, <laughs> you said that you were, uh, I mean, pretty much self-taught finding tutorials yeah. and all that kind of stuff with Photoshop. But then, and I wanted to ask you about this because I had looked at some of your work and at first glance, like on Instagram, before you click on the image, you look at it and you're like, oh, he's doing, he's doing really, you know, detailed comic book art. You click on it and I'm like, wait a minute, those are 3D models. And then I heard you mention Blender before. So you're, you married those into there. One, how did you make the transition into using 3D models like uh, Blender or using 3D software? And two, that's 10 times harder to learn than using Photoshop. So how did you teach yourself that? So two questions for you there. Well, how I taught myself that is goes back to us. I am a student of art. Okay. <laughs> I will do whatever is necessary to make myself better. Right. Um, but how I got into it was uh, it was an artist and he's still around. Obviously, he's phenomenal. His name is Kingsletter. He's a 3D guy. And I noticed that he was sculpting 3D pieces to create for statues, right? To create statues that would be sold for either like uh, sideshow collectibles or other, other places of that. Oh, really? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. And this was years ago. I want to give it, eh, I want to say years ago. We'll, we'll say like six years ago, seven years ago. All right. And um, I noticed how bland it looked when he would show the model but when he would render these things out he would render them in a grayscale that when you would paint it in photoshop and you use like a, a, a kind of blend mode like you know if you did like uh multiply blending or or, yeah. or anything you know like uh, linear dodge or anything like that the way it would take to I, I would even call it a substrate, right? Like it, the way it would take to it, it just absorbed the, the, the color so well. And if you just layered it and textured it, it gave you almost this photo photorealistic um, quality. And I, I was like, wow, that's cool. Now, the first two years was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware um, of how bl working with Blender is, yeah. <laughs> It was a nightmare, nightmare. But, um, you know, YouTube University mm. and, uh, you know, some grit and some, you know, sleepless nights, yeah. I was able to get at least a basic knowledge of it. And I'm not going to say I'm an expert in it, but at least when it comes to creating humanoid figures, maybe some monsters and scoping them and rigging them, I'm okay. And again, I, I only need enough of it to put it into Photoshop for me to paint anyway. So it's not like I need to color it. If I had to color these things in the program, I'd be in trouble. Cause... Yeah. No, and that's right when you said that, you're like, you put it into Photoshop and then paint on top of it. I'm like, oh, because I was looking at those and I'm like, how are you doing the airbrush type style? Like creating material for that in Blender, that's difficult. Or even trying to do it so many times and all and duh then you're like you're like duh export it and then import that image that you exported into photoshop and paint on top Absolutely. of it that Absolutely. never occurred to and me then, and a lot of times like sometimes with some of the 3d models you see that i put on my reels they have hair but i don't leave them in when i export them i get rid of the hair because i'd rather do the hair by hand mm -hmm. than you know because if anybody's worked with blender they know that exporting any of that stuff or maybe you know uh, not not exporting it um kind of setting up the textures for hair mm -hmm. would be a nightmare yeah. so i don't bother that's why a lot of the times when you see the reels the hair looks kind of blocky because i don't know how to texturize it so that it looks like hair so i just get rid of it and you know give myself a guide and just do it by hand okay so, and it's still i'm i'm amazed at how you decided well I can do this, but what if I tried a harder process to make this even better? I mean, it makes sense when I say that sentence that way, <laughs> you know, because it makes it better. <laughs> but man, yeah, that's like really, uh, uh, 
I don't know. I feel like, no, I wouldn't have. I was going to say, I feel like at some point I would just be like, it's not worth it. But it's like, no, I still mess with Blender and there's no reason for me to use it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's... I mean, that's that's only one of the programs I use, you know, like depending on what I want to do, there's a program called Hexagon that is mm. really good for, um, you know, uh, kind of creating non-humanoid figures, right? Like, what if I don't need a human being or, or someone that's, you know, looks like a man and I need a creature that doesn't really have legs, right? It's good for that because the sculpting process is a lot simpler mm -hmm. and I'm able to just create a general shape and then just export that and then do all my texturing or whatever else I want to do. Maybe it doesn't have a face and I put the face in afterwards or... okay. I mean, just a lot, a lot less complicated than, uh, let's say, Blender or or uh, what's the other one, um, ZBrush. Oh, uh, ZBrush! I, I forgot about ZBrush. I I can't. Yeah, I try. I've tried. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I get so mad. I just I can't. So there are you... certain things I can do, but I, I right, not a lot. <laughs> no, I haven't tried. I think I want to say I tried ZBrush in the mid 2000s and uh, yeah no uh <laughs> but even then i barely knew what i was doing at the time so i just never went back to it uh it, now with these sort of i would they be i want to say 3d mixtures i don't know i guess i don't know what i would call that with the it, it's called hybrids hybrids are, thank you what it is yeah, Duh, yeah it's right there i was i'm like i swear there's got to be a word for this um, with these hybrids now, what did you start doing with them? Uh, I mean, you were making them, I'm assuming for yourself, just for learning and to do something cool, but did they do, did they eventually lead to something? Did you start? Yes. Okay. Tell Absolutely. me about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like, um, I got, uh, my first movie poster, which is still on Amazon prime right now to this day is was for a movie that won some awards at the Tribeca film festival called ghost box cowboy. Oh, okay. And um, I created some other stuff that wasn't three. It wasn't three D based. It, it, you know, it was more composition, and it was about Ric Flair when Ric Flair was oh. in you know, from the WWE when he was in uh, the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting press off of that. Um, you know, for the New York Post and the Daily News, and nice. Um, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I had a good publicist at that time so okay <laughs> but uh but um it worked out you know and and because of that he ran the director of the movie came across that he was like you ever done any movie posters i'm like no he was like your style kind of would fit great with a movie poster can i commission you i'm like yeah. hell yes okay like, yes absolutely i did two versions and the one version was more like you know, the digital art kind of composition style that I was known for at the time. Um, and then I did another one starting to mess with this kind of 3D concepts that I had and trying to, it took me, okay. I mean, he gave me two months, so it probably took me the two months to figure wow. out how okay. to get one figure because I didn't know what I was doing, obviously. So, yeah, um, like the first poster, I kind of knocked it out in a couple of days and then the second one took me the two months because I was trying to, create this atmosphere and i was able to create like a city mm -hmm. um and they ended up using that one and that one worked out beautifully like it, it's still the cover today um cool nice so. what was the and this was for the first one you mentioned or the second one you mentioned so the first movie for the for the first movie poster which was ghost box cowboy ghost okay there you go nice and yeah so is that a different, are there guidelines to that? Because movie posters are different. They are a different type of style. Like if you've ever, you know, like they're Everything. even, they're, I know there are ones where people make fun of how strange movie posters are compared to the characters in the movie. So were you given any notes on that? I'm curious what that's like. So in every kind of industry I've had my hand in, you always have, the creative brief, mm -hmm. right? So I've done stuff for the music scene. I've done stuff for movies. I've done stuff for comic books. And everybody always has a creative brief. It is very rare 
as someone just goes, just create something, you know, you know, here's the True. character. Yes. Uh, because I, I still have to work kind of within the confines of that world. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, some bands, which I will mention, but uh, some bands have ridiculous, ridiculous briefs of like what you can and can't do. Okay. I mean, pages. <laughs> Really? Pages of don'ts. Yeah. Oh, Damn, yeah. I have a hard enough time writing a bio, let alone have pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Some of them kind of nuts, but Funny. some of them you get it. Like some of them, like they, um, there was a band that like one of their briefs was like, you know, no um, kind of fantasy characters. So like no dragons, no mm. um, elves or whatever. But it made sense because like in kind of like in metal, if you have like power metal and stuff like that, they kind of dwell in those worlds, right? Like the fantasy world, like right. Ronnie James Dio, right? Like he talk about like middle evil times essentially. So mm-hmm. it would make sense if like you came with like uh, I don't know, like a dragon or whatever, it would fit his brand. Yeah. But then there are other bands like I don't know, like maybe Slipknot or something. You're not gonna make a unicorn for like Slipknot. Like <laughs> it doesn't doesn't make sense. I right. mean. Kind of you could, but you'd probably have to flip That's it. That's what anyway, I thought, too. I'm like, just, oh, you can make it work. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know. But I get you, yeah. Conversation, yeah, it, just certain things you just wouldn't do. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but like everybody has always had a brief. Everybody's always had a design brief. Okay. You know? And mo- movie posters, I feel like movie posters and music art has the most briefs, uh, have the most, you know, guidelines as to what is acceptable what's not acceptable and then what every artist knows is the dreaded revisions oh yes 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 every single project i don't care how good you are you will get some revisions some of them will make sense some of them will not make sense Mm -hmm. and it's your job to make sense of it either way so (laughs) right or just eventually give in and do it to be done with it Uh (laughs) guilty (laughs) right yeah (laughs) Yeah, there's only so, so much and so much budget. Uh, no, I get that. Now, on the flip side, you also do a, uh, or from actually, I'm assuming this, so I'm going to ask it, but you do some work for <laughs> Gas Digital Network. Now, what That's do you correct. do for that? That's a, it, I, I'm kind of confused. I know it's somewhat dealing in the podcast realm. Like, what is, first of all, the Gas Digital Network? So, Gas Digital network is a network of essentially comedians that are doing video podcast style shows okay um and you know you'll have guys like Luis j gomez uh, zach amigos uh, shane gillis like uh, godfrey so it's a whole slew of different people right yeah um they each have their own show and they hire someone like me to either create logos for the show or their promo slots. So whenever you see, like a Zach Amigos is a, is a good one. We just rebranded his whole stuff. I did his new logo that he uses on everything for his show, uh, Midnight Spook Show, which mm-hmm. he watches old uh, horror movies or sometimes some deep cut horror movies. Nice. And they watch it live like uh, kind of, uh, was that, what was that show? Mystery Science Theater. Um, yep. As I was just, just going like to say, as an old school fan, I have every single episode on, on disc. <laughs> so yeah. I'm full, right when you said that, I'm like, that's right up my alley. <laughs> so, so like that, like, you know, but horror based and he brings on other comedians. And I, it's what it is one of my favorite shows on there because like it's hilarious, the stuff they say. Yeah, um, no, I'm a fan of that genre. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'll create the logo that he uses for the show. Maybe, you know, create the layout of how his video would sit, you know, have his, when he has a video set up, you know, mm-hmm. he's got to have something so you can see the movie and then so oh, like the overlays the and, and stuff. Exactly. Right. Oh, really? Um, huh. And then on top of that, um, maybe the Instagram posts, you know, like showcasing, Hey, this is coming up or the promos. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I do for them. So how did you get started that? How does one get involved? Was it through just word of mouth, networking? Did you know some people that knew some people? Like, how did you get involved in that? So they had an ad that I came across. Oh. 
And I was just, you know, I'm always looking for extra work. I'm an artist. Like, every right. artist is always out there scouring the web looking for I never more thought, work. though, to look for ads to do that. Okay, continue. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I see the ad. I respond. Forgot about it even. Didn't even think of it. I get an email that was from Ralph Sutton, which Ralph Sutton is, you know, one of the owners. Um, and I know the name from, I knew the name from uh, radio because I've heard his name somewhere before, you know, and I'm, I do listen to heavy metal and stuff like that. And he had a rock channel. So I heard, I've heard the name before. And I'm, I'm thinking someone's pulling my leg, right? Because hmm. I, mean, I hate to use wrestling terms here, but I've got buddies that like to rib me a lot. Ribbing mm -hmm. means pull practical jokes, right? Oh yeah. So uh, I see the email and I'm like, it's gotta be one of my one of my guys ribbing me. I, I don't bull crap, right? Here we go. We're gonna set up an interview. I'm like, oh, you gonna set up an interview? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. They have a Zoom link. I'm like, okay, so if it's him on the camera, then I know it's You think it. they would have gone this far with it? That you would have been like, I'm going to show up and there's going to be like a person in a clown mask on the other side. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me tell you something. You don't know my friends. Okay. <laughs> my friends. Gotcha. And, and if they're watching this, I love you guys, but you guys are degenerates. <laughs> <laughs> um, they'll go the extra mile. They don't okay. care. <laughs> um, so I'm like, okay, you get on the Zoom call. No one has their camera on. Except for me. Okay. Now I really think it's a rib, right? Mm -hmm. And I just go into this whole interview kind of just nonchalantly, like, you know, eh, whatever. If I get it, I get it. Because I'm still thinking it's a rib. And apparently that strategy worked because I ended up getting this. <laughs> nice. So it was the I don't believe you uh, method. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it worked. Actually, it worked that makes a lot of sense. I, I don't know why more people don't do that. Yeah, because you 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 don't you're not nervous you don't have because you don't think it's real anyway. So like right, yeah, and and because you can tell yourself that that's what you're gonna do that you're gonna be like uh, I'm just gonna go in and pretend I don't even care and it's like well you're pretending you don't even care and there's an inkling of you going this will work and I'll get the job yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so yeah. can't be done so that I way. I literally went into it like. Wow. You know, with the mindset of one of my boys is ribbing me, you know, so like. <laughs> That's cool, though. So what kind of stuff do you send to them from that? I know you have a really nice portfolio that you use. Uh, they had a they, they had a trial run. They had a trial run. Oh, so OK. They actually gave me a project which they paid for my time, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. You know, because I, it was a project to see if I could do the work, but they still paid me for my time. OK. And. When I saw, you know, when I realized everything was legit, like I worked harder because I was like, I gotta, right, you know, gotta make sure I I pop my chest stuff, I pop my chest off a little too much. I gotta make it so. Okay. <laughs> and I turned this thing around in like two days. <laughs> Man. Okay. Yeah. What was? And, it, it, were well, they expecting it in two days, or you were just like, that's no. how hard you worked? Okay. No, they they gave me like a week. Nice. And I turned it around in two days. I was like, oh, man, let me, let me just get ahead and put the work in. Wow. And it turned out great. It turned out great. And uh, then they were like, all right, yeah. I mean, come in. You're, we're good to go with you. Okay. And like, we'll take you. And I'm like, thanks. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Now, yeah. with both of these things that you do, both the commercial and the, I'm just going to say personal, but I think there's one style that you do that's just really you. And then the other one that you do where people go make this. Uh, yeah. It, what type of stuff do you have or uh, plan to have coming up or things that you're doing that you're like, keep a lookout for this sort of thing? So I have a lot of stuff that like I, I love the comic book variant. You know, like I love creating comic book variants where it's specifically – Someone specifically hired me because they want a son of a saint variant of their character. Mm -hmm. That's what I love to do. I, I love creating that. Like I, I probably like got thirty of them done by different titles. Well, nice. all indie, all indie. But they're you know, I, I have free range of to do whatever I want with their right. character so long as I keep the aspect of the character intact. 
Um, so that's what I absolutely love to do um, because I can do my flair on it. I have a like very, I tend to have a very dark and gritty style that have pops mm-hmm. of color. So that's what I love to do. Um, and obviously the detail psychopath part of it. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's, that's the stuff I tend to like gravitate towards. Yeah. And do you have any of those coming up for, actually, first of all, do you do comic cons a lot now that you say you do in the variants? I used to, okay. I used to, I used to do before my girls were born. I did, I don't know, 30. Oh, really? 35 cons a year, maybe less. Okay. Around, around that number. Um, yeah, it's probably less, but, uh, <laughs> okay. But around that number. And, and it's still and, a good uh, amount. Yeah. And I used to do, you know, bring mics. I used to do a lot of the um, fan casting. So, like, you know, gender swaps where I had Rosario Dawson as Daredevil, which nice. she, I got to meet her and she loved the piece. And oh, I, that's no kidding. Like a lot of the, like a lot of the people, stuff that I did that involved celebrity, nine times out of ten, I've met them and they like draw more celebrities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it works. I mean, like, listen, the, my, my happiest moment was meeting Mark Hamill. Mm hmm. Because I turned him. I saw that his, Joker that you did, or was it the Joker that you did of Mark Hamill? Okay, yeah, you, but did, that was, you did. That was a, that was a rehash of something I did in 2017. Oh, all right. 2017, I had a split, and this is when, like, if you compared the two, they're night and day. Um, but it was him as Luke Skywalker, and then the other half was Joker, mm. and. Mm. Um, Sometimes every couple of years, I'll revisit a piece and rehash it with the knowledge I have now, and they turn out better. Like, I did a Michael B. Jordan as Superman. Hmm. The first version of that was atrocious. It was terrible. <laughs> okay. I, was, it was, I was first learning how to you know, do the 3D sculpt, and it looked very rigid. Mm-hmm. It was very rigid and robotic, and it had no real life to it. And when I redid it, it looked a lot better. Like, it... it you know, it had a lot more movement in it. It was, it looked more fluent. It, it looked like it was supposed to be where it was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to, I sculpted something, put it out, slap some color on it, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> what? That so, didn't work? No. It, yeah. Right. Terrible. Yeah. And we've all done that. It's just like, oh, I'm done yeah. with it. I, I put this yeah. much into yeah. it. Let's just get it out there. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, when, uh, the Miz was rumored to play Booster Gold. Mm. I but this was like 2016. You know, yeah, there like, was that weird resurgence it. of Booster Gold for a while. What was that? I I don't know, and, I, yeah. and I've never been a fan of Booster Gold. No, I've never ever. Like he pops up in the Justice League, and I'm like, he is useless. Why don't the little character? robot, right. the rocket thing yeah. that follows? It's uh, I barely so like the I Blue the Beetle. Blue, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when I did the first piece of Mid, The Miz as Booster Gold, you could tell I did not care. Like, right. I yeah. just slapped it together, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened with that because it, it, it looked that bad. And then I said, you know what? Just for the sake of growth, I'm going to redo this piece. And it was 20 times better. And The Miz ended up retweeting it. Hmm. And saying, you know, trying to use that as, you know, hey, look, I can't be Booster Gold. Look at this. Like, you know, like it was. Okay. All right. In my head, I was like, dude, like, I just did it for the practice. Like, please, let's not, like, bring back this Booster Gold. Like, like, (laughs) right. What have you done? I I appreciate the retweet. God knows I appreciate it. It's the Green Lantern movies all over again. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Terrible. Oh man. <laughs> so, um, but it, are are there any like uh, galleries or projects or things that are coming out in the next few months um, or anything? Yeah, I do actually. I've got a, I've got a couple of uh, covers that are coming out. So, um, Corrupt Moon issue number four um, for Nick Hughes is dropping in like a couple of weeks actually. Um, but not number four. I, my it, my covers for two and three are done. They've been done. They're dropping in the co- next couple of weeks. No, he's just commissioned me for cover for number four, so that'll be in a couple of months. Um, 
Gaia Succession, which I just posted the other day, will probably have a Kickstarter for March. Um, oh, the comic yeah, will have a Kickstarter or the cover? The comic. No, okay. the, the comic itself. All right. Um, so a lot of these guys are indie guys, and they use Kickstarter to get it public. I've always been fascinated by that. Okay. Yeah, it works out well. Like one of the covers that I've done for Phil Russell, uh, who his title his title is called Tragedy, which is not because I'm commissioned on it, but like because it legit is a great comic book series. Yeah. Um, you know he he has I, he commissioned me for issue two and issue three, um, and he uses Kickstarter all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, it works out really well. Um, Static X has really some artwork of mine. Yeah, has some artwork of mine still available on their site right now for the 20th anniversary of Machine. Okay. Um, if you get the vinyl or the CD and you open it up, the image on the right will be my artwork. Hmm. Um, so you could also pick that up. Um, yeah, that's really for the most part what I could talk about right now. Okay. Um, I do. I do have some NBAs and stuff, but there's stuff with like uh, the NBA that's coming. Nice. Like, that's as far as I could talk about. But um, I guess just keep it locked to my page for when that stuff is available. Yeah. And if people wanted to see that, where would that? Where should they go to see that stuff? That was a good sentence. Where should people go to look for your stuff? <laughs> so. You can go to my Instagram, which is like my primary social media, uh, you know, the underscore son of a saint. And um, if you just Google the son of a saint artist, my other social medias will pop up, whether it be my Facebook, my Twitter, uh, you know, TikTok, if you want to see some of the process of stuff that I do. Um, yeah. And maybe you'll see some past stuff of me, maybe me being a idiot on other interviews or whatever. But <laughs> Like, <laughs> um, okay. Oh, the 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 creative TCP, which is a trading card. Oh yeah. Um, artist set. I saw that. And I talk about this thing all the time because this thing is brilliant. Now I am a series one artist. Um, they are now up to series three, and every series has artists from around the globe, anywhere from forty six to 60 artists from around the world doing their style in three different cards that you can get and are collectible. I am a series one guy. So if you find my card, good luck. God bless you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But on the back of these cards, they create a space for, if you find the artist, you can have them sign it. Oh, nice. And they are actually, you can grade these things. You know, the, the manufacturer uh, that tops uses actually printed these cards. Yeah. So they're, they're the highest quality and they can be worth money um, for collectors. So especially with some of the artists that um, are involved. And what was that called again? Say that. I'm not sure we heard so it. It's called the Creatives TCP. TCP, which is tradable, collectible. Wait, what? TC I saw I saw the link earlier and I know that it stands for that. It's trading cards. TCP. Anyway, they're collectible trading cards. <laughs> I'm trying to decipher the name, and I'm, we just need to tell people about it. It's a neat concept, and I really like that. Uh, I think that's brilliant. super cool. Uh, yeah. uh, the the brainchild of that is an artist named Red Guardian. He is a godsend. He put that together. I don't know how the man sleeps, but yeah, he made it happen. Nice. Okay. And um, you also have a website. Where would that be at? I don't have a website currently. Because there was just so much going on in there, it destroyed my website. Like oh. It got hacked. It, 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 it was a big nightmare right now. I'm trying to get that cleaned up. Okay, so um, Instagram is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I have, to, I have to get that cleaned up. It's terrible. But it typically would have been syncbydesign.com, but... Gotcha. Okay. It's a nightmare. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. It was great meeting you. Thank you so much. It was a great honor being on here.